Hello and welcome to Blogsprout. I'm LJ and today I'm going to go over my month six income report for my niche site case study. So if you're unaware of this case study, I have been giving income reports month by month since the beginning of 2022. So this is the June income report and I know you're all excited. I made over $1,400 this month. So let's dive into the numbers. So what this video is going to cover are the major milestones for the month, the number of articles I published, we're going to look at the page views reported, look at the search console results, income, expenses, and lesson learned and goals for the next month. So the major milestones. So the goals for month six, I wanted to get 30 articles, did that. I wanted to get $150 in affiliate revenue. I checked that 50,000 page views, got that. Wanted to at least reach level three in Azoic. I wanted to get invited to a premium. I haven't been invited yet, so I'm waiting for that to hopefully bump up my revenue. I was targeting $900 in ad revenue, an over $15 EPMV, and upgrade to cloud hosting. I have not upgraded to cloud hosting yet because I have seen that my resources haven't quite come to hit the limit, but I do think I'm going to do it next week. So I pretty much achieved everything I wanted to for month six, which is awesome. So the milestones, the things I'm really excited about is that I had Amazon affiliate orders all but one day. I had someone click on my link and order something. So that's really exciting going from a couple clicks, you know, in the first couple months to having orders every day. It's just really, really exciting. And considering I'm not an affiliate site, it's even more exciting because I'm giving very valuable information. And the other thing I'm extremely excited for is I got over $50 in ads on a single day, only one day, but a day, and halfway to the $100 a day, which we'll see if I get to in the long run. So the articles I posted, I posted 31 articles, so just over my target. I'd like to do more, but I did get a dog this month, so I was a little bit busy and preoccupied with that, so I didn't get to spend as much time on the site as I would have liked. Um, and generally, they're in that 1,000 words average. Some are up to 1,200, some are as low as 7 or 800. It all just depends on the topic. So let's dive into the page views. So um, these are the page views reported by Google and Azoic since the first month. And as you can see, we're still, in, still seeing some really nice growth in terms of total growth. You know, we're not quite doubling like we were at the beginning, um, but that's OK. I mean, we're solidly over 50,000 page views a month, which is really great from both Google and Azoic. So if anyone wants um, to see Google, uh, reporting over 50, I can confidently say that I've I've achieved that. So the pages from Google Analytics are about 59,000. Um, that's a total of 42,000 users. So that's actually quite interesting that I have a number of repeat users, which is not really my intention. It's not really a site necessarily that people come back to unless they need the information again. Um, and it looks like about 40% of the people that um, you know, visit, actually visit another page. So that's a really interesting statistic for me. Um, for month six, so this is the month over month um, growth, I guess, of month five versus month six of page views reported from Azoic. You'll see that was a 61% increase in page views, which is which is not bad. 60% um, increase in visits. You know, so the page views for visits did go down, which is interesting because Google seemed to show it was going up. So I'm not quite sure about that, but engaged page views is up. So that's really exciting. Um, engaged page views for visits is also up. Average duration is up, but average engage time is down. So I have realized as I um, kind of watch my statistics that the longer people are on the pages, the more revenue I get. And unfortunately, my content isn't quite... Um, isn't quite susceptible, I guess, to people wanting to stay and continue reading. But I hope by the end of the year, I'll be able to have content that is like that. Right now, I'm just trying to crank out very informational, quick content, and then I'll move on to that more engaging topics. So the Azoic page views overview from when I first joined Azoic, we're still in that nice growth. Um, I I'm interested to see when it starts to plateau, but I honestly believe if I keep posting the way I'm 
posting, I will continue to grow. Um, this isn't really a niche that will cap off that early. I think there's a lot of potential. And we'll see in the search console results later how much I'm showing up even in the results. So if I can move up in higher positions, this, this site's going to take off. So my traffic sources, um, I have 60% coming from Google and 12% coming from DuckDuckGo. So it's nice to see that I'm not at like a 90% Google, but I really would like to try to diversify the traffic source because I know if there's an update and Google decides it doesn't like my site, I'm going to pretty basically lose, you know, all my income. So I'm starting to think about other ways to do that, but right now it's not very conducive for um, social media or, or other sources like that. So we're going to look into Search Console. We're going to look at Bing and Webma Bing Webmasters in Google Search Console. Um, so I also, <laughs> as you'll see, like to go into some of the results for um, SEMrush. So from a keyword standpoint, um, you'll see that they report a pretty significant traffic growth. What you see on the left is last month and on the right is this month. So from 24,000 to 37,000. Of course, that's underestimated based on the other metrics, but this is kind of a, a delayed metric. Um, which is What's interesting is that the transactional is starting to go up and informational is going down. And I'm curious, I don't have uh, SEMrush Premium, so I can't really look into that too much. Um, but I, I do want to keep an eye out on it to see what keywords they're considering are transactional um, because a lot of what I post is just strictly informational. So Google Search Console. Um, so since inception, I got 2.3 million impressions. So that's a lot. And this is where I'm getting um, some hope that this site could really take off if I improve those positions. You know, throughout the entire course of... Um, being on Google, I have an average position of 11.9. So I'm just on the second page and I still have 2 million impressions and uh, only 56,000 clicks that I, I really think that those, those clicks are going to go up if I put in the effort to try to improve the content that's currently ranking. So what you'll see here are the actual um, metrics for this month. So um, the top line is showing this month's clicks and I have 33,000. So 56 total and 33,000 this month, it just continues to grow and 1.25 million impressions just from this month. So I am very confident that I've, I just continue to, to pump out this content and keep it at the quality that I have been achieving, then it will just continue to grow. I haven't quite reached that average position under 10 to be on the first page, but the key is to be under 10 on those high search volume key ter keyword terms. So I'm going to dig into those metrics a little bit sooner or a little bit later, and hopefully I can start to bump that up. But I'm still really just focusing on, on getting out the content. So Bing Webmaster... This only has, you know, 233,000 impressions and 17,000 clicks, but it's got a click-through rate of 7.2, um, essentially, and with an average position of 4, which isn't bad. Um, it is continuing to grow. I think that's just because I am publishing more articles that are pretty much immediately ranking. I don't think there's going to be any kind of hockey stick growth because I'm already doing pretty well on Bing. So this is something that I want you all to keep in mind is that Bing's a good, a good metric of how well your, um, your SEO is working out when it comes to individual posts. Because from my experience, you rank pretty easily on Bing with some basic SEO tools. So if you don't see yourself ranking on Bing, my thoughts is the chance of uh, ranking on Google are very slim. So Bing Webmaster Tools only got 5.4 thousand clicks um, this month. Average positions around the same as it's been for the last six months. Oh, that's supposed to say month, month six. I thought I changed them all. That's okay. Um, and 70,000 impressions. So again, I really just want to try to focus on getting those impressions to convert over to clicks. And unfortunately, changing titles and things like that isn't really going to affect the click-through rate, but... 
I know Zoic has a nice feature where you can test that out, so I may consider it in the future. I am just so focused on getting content out that I haven't had a lot of time to focus on conversions. So Uber suggests nicely has bumped me up in domain authority by three. I was at 10 last month and 13 this month. Um, I've increased my referring domains and the number of backlinks, at least according to Uber suggests. Backlinks, I can't quite figure out how they're measured. As you'll see in the rest of the sides, Uber suggests, Google Search Console, and SEMrush all have vastly different numbers. Um, but either way, they're all going up. So that's a great sign. So here's, you know, just a graph of the keywords that I'm generally ranking for and where they are showing up. And as you'll see, the number of, um, the number of uh, keywords continues to grow and the number of green continues to grow. So this is, this is where there's a lot of discrepancies. SEMrush says I have 2.5 thousand backlinks. That's not right. Um, and 284 referring domains. So I don't know if I really trust um, this information because again, you'll see later on that SEMrush has given me a very high domain authority because it thinks I have all these backlinks. But in reality, I don't think I do, at least not yet. Um, so, what we're seeing here is just the backlink analysis. I have zero domains that are in the 81 to 100 authority score. Most of them are in the low authority, but I do have a couple in 40 to 60. It's only 1%, it's only three links, but it's better than nothing. Um, so the SERP features that SEMrush reports, on the top is what I had last month, and on the bottom is what I have this month. So featured snippets, I've earned about, what is it? 77, 77 like keywords have showed up in featured snippets and I've nearly doubled my people also ask. So that's awesome. My image packs basically doubled. Um, the videos seem to disappear, um, but it's growing, which is, which is great. I don't really focus that much on necessarily optimizing for featured snippets, but I definitely think about writing in terms of ways that someone might search for a specific term and what a good answer would be. So the SEMrush keywords, um, what you see on the left is the position distribution of all my keywords. So there's, you know, the majority of my keywords still sit in 21 to 50, but hopefully my more targeted keywords are the ones that are in the one to three and four to 10. Remember, this is showing all the keywords you're ranking for. And Google reports that 15% of all searches are brand new. So that includes those type of so those type of keywords. Um, so on the right is a uh, trend graph of where my keywords are sitting over time. And what I like to see is that yellow line continues to go up. So um, in, between, in between this yellow and the, the dark blue are the number of keywords in the top three. And it's, it's nice to see that that's, that's growing. Um, so keyword positions, this is a new feature I found on SEMrush, so I'm really glad I found this because it's essentially like a SERP robot um, report, except I don't have to pay for it and I don't have to put in the specific keywords that I'm looking for. So it said that I got 169 new keywords and 350 of my keywords have improved. 100 unfortunately declined and I guess I lost 77 that metric. I'm not really sure what it is, so if you're familiar with it, please let me know because I didn't take any articles down, so I don't know how I lost a keyword. Um, I could just see myself ranking lower for a keyword. But I guess if there was a search query that was not found in the next month, that could be considered a loss. So some rush authority, this is kind of where I don't really quite understand why it's saying I'm at a 44. I mean, I'm happy with it. I think it's great, but it's basing it off that high backlink number, which just I don't think exists. Um, going from 14 to a 44 in one month without that much of a backlink profile, I think is a little bit unusual. So Google backlinks though, this is something that's nice to see is that I relatively trust the, the backlinks that are shown on Google Search Console and it said I only had 53 referring domains um, and now I have 81. And actually one of my biggest competitors 
linked to me and they have a much higher authority than I do. So I think that's something that, that did help in the, in the long run. So if I see this number go up, even if it's spam, the chances that one of them are meaningful is are pretty good odds. So I will take the backlinks and if Google decides they're spam, that's fine. So let's look at income. I know this is, this is what everyone's looking for. And I have um, gotten $1,400 this month. $1,403.79. I thought I was just going to hit over 1000 And I got up to 1400 And I'm so excited about that. Um, so Azoic earnings, this is um, at the bottom is what Azoic is reporting for all the income earned, both through the Azoic advertisers and Google mediation. So there are 57,000 visits, 67,000 page views. You can see that the revenue kind of stayed about the same um, throughout the month, but there is a slight increase. So Google AdSense, at the beginning of the month, I had some really good mediation income and it kind of continued to decline and now it's starting to crawl back up. And I don't really know how, um, if there's anything to pull from this kind of information, but what I have found is the more competitive Google AdSense becomes and the more income I make through AdSense, the more I usually make throughout the day. So whatever the Google AdSense partners are competing against Zoic, they usually pay out higher when I actually win the bid. So Amazon affiliates, as you know, if you've been following my channel, my site is um, designed to be informational, but I do have informational posts that find appropriate products for consumers. So it's not the best of content. Um, it's like, okay, you need to do this. This is what you need. So that's how I'm getting these commissions is, as I mentioned before, I earned, or I, there was an order every single day, except the 19th of June, which I mean, I'll take it because as you can see one day I had, 35 ish ordered products and as you can see here i have one outlier that's because someone ordered a like 650 dollars item it is in my my niche so it's not like they just ordered a random product that like this high value watch or something that i didn't um i didn't promote but as you see i have a 12 percent conversion that's pretty good six thousand dollars in revenue that means i have influenced people to purchase six thousand dollars worth of products and i'm getting 250 back can't complain about that um so azoic video ads i am happy i'm giving this a little bit more time because throughout the month it's only thirty dollars but it is thirty dollars and in the past, you know, last month I only earned $13. So I am seeing this number continue to grow up. So I want to give it a little more time because Zoic really is pushing their video content. So the more content I can publish um, with video, hopefully the more income I can make with video ads. So let's look at the EPMV. So because the Zoic and Google visits are slightly different, I like to report the metrics for both. Usually, Google visits are lower than Azoic, but what you can see here is that the Google visits were, um, were in fact actually lower, so it makes the EPMV higher. So Azoic reported a $20 EPMV and Google $21. My goal in the past has been $15, and I think I hit that last month, but the months before I was teetering like just under $15, so it's really exciting to see me hitting $20 for ads and then with the amazon income i'm hitting a 24 and 25 dollar epmv so i really hope that once i get invited to premium if i do that will start to increase of course i have the costs for the azoic premium but they will pay for themselves in revenue so expenses i was planning on putting some money into it this month for hosting It'll have to be in next month's report, but I actually spent nothing again on this website. So all of that money is profit. So lessons learned. So the major activities I did is that I added the 
the native ad units at the bottom of my page at the beginning of the month. So Zoic estimates that this is a 10% increase. I don't think I've had a 10% increase, but considering the EPMV went up quite a bit from last month, I do think it's playing an effect. So native ad units from Zoic are basically those ads at the bottom that say like related content and they'll have, um, you know, different articles not on your site to go to. They're a little bit spammy in my opinion, but they're at the bottom of the page and honestly, very few of my um, users even make it to the bottom of the page. So if they do, great, I'll get the income if they get the impression. So the problems I faced this month, I was having some issues um, with page speed. As I mentioned in the previous video, I was having uh, LCP issues on my desktop. So I thought that if I enabled Leap, that was going to work, but let me back up. So one of the things I did on Azoic is I enabled AI ad placements, but when I went to visit my site in mobile, there was an ad placement that was covering the entire section. It basically was a sticky ad that sat on the top, but it covered your entire screen. So essentially anybody that was coming to my site could not read my content. And that was very scary to me because I knew over time, if people can read my content, they were gonna bounce faster and quicker and I was gonna lose my ranking on Google. So I worked hard to figure out where that was coming from. And apparently it was due to an AI placeholder that was at the top of my mobile page. So I went through and removed the AI placeholder. Hopefully when I get into premium, I'll have a one-on-one -on -one talk where they can discuss how to use AI placeholders appropriately because they do suggest it's great for mobile, but I certainly don't want it covering all of my content. I have noticed that my Google positions are worse in desktop. Um, and I think that's in part due to my LCP failing. Um, it's just over 2.5 seconds and I'm not sure why I think it might be due to the video ads I'm playing and the number of, you know, I have ads in the top, a sticky ad, and sometimes there's, you know, content such as an image or another ad that's, um, slowing down. And I really want to improve the rankings in my Google because I'm getting higher EPMBs on desktop. So I... I need to figure out a way to bump up the positions because I can really start to um, improve my earnings if I do that. Um, I was also finding that after looking into PHP Insights, the ads just seem to be really slowing down my site. What you can see kind of behind my picture is just all the ads coming in that are um, affecting my my page speed income, uh, page speed um, for my site. And it it's really unfortunate that I'm seeing it push back my content that much. So I will continue to keep an eye out, eye out on it, maybe work with the Zoic and try to figure out how to do it better. Um, I did run into my site being down for a couple hours. Um, I couldn't edit my site, you couldn't visit my site, and I contacted my hosting um, company, Hostinger, um, and there apparently was a DDoS attack on the server. So the site had been down. Fortunately, it didn't really impact revenue or visits all that much, and it was at, you know, it was late at night on the East Coast, so it wasn't like the middle of the day where I usually get most of my traffic. So it wasn't great. But they solved the problem and my sites had no issues since. So the lessons learned, um, AI placeholders can in fact mess up your site. <laughs> um, and the problem I found is that I couldn't actually find the AI placeholders in my dashboard. Maybe there's something I'm missing. But from my experience, I could not just simply remove that placeholder on mobile that AI had created. One of the things I did do to try to reduce the LCP, which is causing the failing metrics in my desktop, is I made my logo smaller and the header a bit smaller. I thought it would help. I think it helped a little bit. So I revalidated it, tried to revalidate it on um, 
Google Search Console, but it still failed. Still failed. Um, I changed the format a little bit, removed WordPress emojis, um, tried to remove rank math. I tried to go to Leap on 6.8, but then mobile, like the mobile score just tanked, but desktop was better. So I don't, I don't, the page speed thing is a little bit difficult for me because I know it's not going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. I'm happy where it is now, but I know it can be better. And I know I mentioned previously changing my theme. That may happen. I actually am going to be making another site on a new theme and see if I like those results so that I could potentially change in the future. So goals for month seven. Again, want to keep consistent, consistently publishing about 30 articles. I got 250 in affiliate revenue. Maybe I can get to 300. Um, I don't expect that my um, page views are going to double, so I'd like to still hit 60,000 page views. I want to be able to apply for, for level three because at this point I have reached the metrics to get to level three with Azoic, but I actually want to apply and get accepted. Hopefully I can get invited to premium this month. Um, I want to get $1,200 in ad revenue again. Keep an EPMV of at least over 18. Yes, I hit over 20, but things change. That was the end of Q2. So we may see it go back down. I do plan to really upgrade to cloud hosting. Now, again, that change theme may happen, may not. And I've been thinking about potentially hiring a virtual assistant just because I'm starting a few other projects and I definitely think there are ways I can outsource some of the efforts that I'm doing to kind of push this channel so I can publish more content for you and give you more more valuable resources um, so that hopefully you can do the same thing. The biggest watch out I think to this point is still that LCP on the desktop. I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for it in the long run and we will kind of see where it goes. So the overview, here's the, the overview of earnings and expenses since the beginning of the year. Um, I am in the green $2,200 on this site specifically. Um, most of that came from this month, as you can see, um, but I've been profitable for the last three months and I, I continue to do so even with my upgraded hosting and potentially getting a VA as long as I'm, you know, even earning $100 a month, I, I still think I will um, be very successful in this site. So it's, yeah, it's just, it's really nice to see these numbers. It's really nice to see the month over month continuing to grow. That's all my goal is, is just continue to grow the site. It's been growing faster than I ever expected. In no way, shape, or form did I think I was going to reach $1,400. I hope to reach 1000 but I got an extra $400. So I really can't complain about um, my efforts and how they are paying out right now. So thank you again for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing the other videos for the last um, six five months, I guess, you can check out the, the playlist where I go through all these same metrics. Um, so I guess I'll see you in, in month seven and feel free to check out the rest of my channel. Thanks. I'm LJ. This is Blocksprout. Nice to see you.